doesn't come from what you have heard, it's what you are presently hearing. The enemy was behind him. The Red Sea was before him. God told Moses, stretch your hand over the Red Sea. And he did. And the Bible says, it's open. To the Holy Spirit is the secret of my success. Said the Holy Spirit is the secret of my success. I, I just realized, I've learned over the years to just depend upon the Holy Spirit. Jesus trusts the Holy Spirit. The Father trusts the Holy Spirit. I mean, Jesus turned himself over. Think about this, okay? We know that Jesus was God, and he's God, right? But he was also a man. He was a man. God didn't die on the cross. A man died on the cross. Because no one could kill God. Right? But it was the man Christ Jesus who went to the cross and died. It was the man Christ Jesus who went to hell. But it's, it's so amazing that Jesus, as a man, trusts what God says about him. Believe that the Holy Spirit would raise him from the dead because David prophesied about him. He believed what God says about him. And in these times, in these wicked times that we're living in, come on, we have to, first of all, know what God says about us and believe what God says about us. Are you here with me? Yeah. Know what God says about you and believe what God says about you. What God says about you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Oh my goodness. Are you here this morning? I said God already prophesied that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. When you believe that, you set the Holy Ghost in motion. And when he show up on the scene, he's over for the devil. When the Holy Ghost show up on the scene, he's over. Say it's over. But you have to believe it. Like Jesus believed the prophecy of David that God will allow his body to rot in the grave. He believed the prophecy about himself. And he, he, went, he went to the cross believing the word of God. I mean, you think you have problems? Jesus went to the cross, gave up his life, because he received, there was a prophecy given about him years ago that death wouldn't hold him. And when he believed the prophecy, he set the Holy Ghost in motion. So when I believe the prophecy, come on, when I believe the prophecy about my life, I set the Holy Ghost in motion. Every time you believe the word of God, Concerning your life. There's, a, there's a, a young king in the Bible. I think it was the Josiah. My, my name, my, my the names could mix up, but one of the young kings. He became king over Israel when he was eight years old. Eight years old. How many years old? Years before, years before, a, a prophet came to the altar and prophesied that Israel would have a king, that God would raise up a king. Are you listening to me? I'm saying when you believe prophecy, you set the Holy Ghost in motion because we need the Holy Ghost in these wicked times. I need the Holy Ghost to watch over my children. You cannot pray enough prayers to cover them. Where's my church again? You cannot pray enough prayers to protect them. You need the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost needs one thing from you. 
believe the word of God. This young king, someone prophesied that there'll be a king that God can raise up. When he was eight, he'll be eight years old, he'll be sitting on the throne. Years later, he became king. He fulfilled the prophecy. But they lost the law. They lost all of the prophecies. They lost all the written prophecies, which is interesting. You see, prophecies can be written down, but prophecies also in the atmosphere. Hovering over someone who can believe them. Oh my God. Hovering over a church. Hovering over a family. Hovering over a nation. Israel lost the prophecy, but it was still in the invisible realm. It was still hovering over this young man. Now he's, he's king. And the Bible, he was a righteous king. He did everything that was right in the eyes of God. But when he read the prophecy that God will raise up a king, even give the king's name, the Bible says he ripped his clothes and changed the nation. My point here, when we as a church, when we as a family, when we as a nation start to believe the word of God, it will set the Holy Ghost in motion. And you cannot wait when tragedy takes place to start believing the Bible. You can't wait when bad things happen to start to believe the Bible. Because when you believe the words, when I believe the word, I set the Holy Ghost in motion. Am I boring you already? I don't want to bore you. I'll, re I'll, re I'll resign if I'm boring you. <laughs> when you believe the word of God, say, so when I believe the word of God, I set the Holy Ghost in motion. When I believe the word of God, I set the Holy Ghost in motion. Now, do you have a... Uh, uh, announce it about the youth you're saying, Angelo. Why don't you come over here and make an announcement about the youth? This is Angelo. He's a man of God. Give him some love. Hallelujah. He loves our children. Come up here, son. You make an announcement about the children. Yes, I just wanted to confirm because uh, this Friday we're actually having the stay the night at, at the church, and our youth is going to be here at the church, so we're going to have Beautiful. a worship and, and we're going to have a great time and um, just spend time with each other and just. Um, connect and and be silly and fun and just be able to really just um, tap into what God has for us because it was just it's, it's it's really about connecting with the Amen. with the young people and stuff like that so we're looking at having that and I just wanted to confirm that we're having a potluck so we need the the families and is this, to, it is coming Friday this Friday is November seventeenth yep at seven o'clock so the we would expect everybody to be here around seven o'clock no parents no parents just kids only um. The parents can show up if they want to drop something off, but yeah, this is mainly for the yeah, youth. Yeah, this yeah, is a yeah. youth event. I just want to make sure. Um, no, no parents. Maybe before you bring the dinner over or something. Like that. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to confirm that because it's coming right around the corner, and this is probably the last chance to be able to say anything. So I just wanted to be fresh in your minds that Amen. you know we want to be able to eat when we're staying the night. So God bless. Thank you. Love you, man. Parents, you hear that? Bring your kids down to church. Bring some J Jamaican chickens to pass up and enjoy it. <laughs> I'm not going to be here. I'm just, I'm just you know, messing with you, man. So bring the kids and um, bring some food. Our kids need to know that we support them. Amen? Our kids and the kids are going to go. The youth, the youth leader waiting for you. They have a program for you. Amen? The teenagers. The teenagers. Not the little ones. Now, I was saying to you, in this, in this time, in these last days, we're living in prophetic days where the scriptures have been fulfilled. Are you following me here? And time is running out. Jesus is coming back very soon for his church. Are you following me here? And there are some things that the Bible already prophesied must take place first. And one of the things that were taking place would be, it would be, um, man would become lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. 
Man will become lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. Man will be so consumed about their self, about their opinions, and, and rather than what God thinks about the matter. It, it, we, this is a sign of the last days that we're living in. And as a pastor, I just want to inspire you and encourage you that if God is for you, come on, who can be against you? If God is for you, nothing of hell can come against you. But you have to believe that. You have to believe that. The Bible tells us that the power worketh in them that believes. The power worketh. That's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost only work in the life of believers. I didn't say Christians. You could be a Christian and not a believer. Not every Christian is a believer. A believer is someone who, who trusts the Holy Ghost, who trusts the gospel, who trusts what Christ declared about them. That's a believer. Not every Christian is a believer. I'm serious. I said not every Christian is a believer. A believer is someone who walked with God. Not a perfect person. I was saying the other day that um, God never looked to you to find out how you are doing. He looked to Jesus to see how you are doing. He never looked to you because Jesus represents you in heaven. You represent him on the earth. He said, you are the light of the world. You are the city of the, on the hill. You are the display of God in your generation. So the more of God that rests upon your life is better for you. The more of God that working in you is better for you. I say it's better for you. I say it's better for you. It, you'll be more profitable as a believer. The reason why I say that, the word, I'm not, I'm not going to split his over words, but there's a difference between a Christian and a believer. That's what I'm going to say. I've met a lot of Christians before, by name, not really believers. Because when you're a believer, you walk like one. You talk like one. You love like one. When you're a Christian, it's a name tag. So that's a nice name tag. I'm a Christian. When you're a believer, you act like God. You speak like God. What touched God, touch your heart. What breaks God's heart must break your heart. I said, when you're a believer, what breaks Daddy God's heart must break your heart. I've been praying this prayer. Lord, break my heart with the things that break your heart. Breaks my heart with the things that break your heart. Amen. Praise God. Now, let's go again. I'm, I'm continuing talking about fresh oil. I'm not getting away from that because it's it it working for me. Fresh oil is working for me. I ain't no fool. If it's working for me, I keep preaching it. Fresh oil is working for me. I said fresh oil is working for me. What about you? Write this statement down. You change your circumstances when you change your habits. And when you change your habits, you will change your beliefs. When you change your beliefs, you will change your destiny. Jesus, if you can believe, all things are possible. So how do you change your belief? Simple. You change your circumstances when you change your habits. And when you change your habits, you will change your beliefs. 
When you change your beliefs, you change your destiny. You change your destiny. A lot of people are asking God, Lord, change my destiny. Lord, change my, um, increase my faith. Lord, change my circumstances. Lord, I want a miracle. So I'll just give you an equation for a miracle right there. You change your circumstances when you change your what? Your habits, your habits, your habits. Your habits you have right now, if we don't change it, it will show up when you turn 60 years old or 90 years old. So for you to change your belief, you must change your habits. Change your habits. And when you change your habits, it's impact your faith. It's impact your belief system. And when you change your belief, change your destiny. Change your destiny. Are you here with me, right? So, let's look at um, Psalms 92. Oh, ho, 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 ho. Psalm 92, verse 10. Psalm 92, verse 10. 92, verse 10. You can have a good time with the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. The devil is in trouble because our habits are about to change. The devil is in trouble because our belief system is about to be impacted. But my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with what? Fresh oil. Come on, say fresh oil. I've been telling you, I've been telling you, when fresh oil comes on your head, your life will be different. There's certain strongholds I used to struggle with. I don't show with those strongholds any longer. There's certain habits I used to have in my life. I don't struggle any longer. Are you following me here? And my belief or my faith or my conviction that was once small has expanded because of this fresh oil. I said because of this fresh oil. This fresh oil is doing me good. Opening amazing doors for me. Amazing doors for me. God has been good to me. I said God has been good to me. What about you? I said before, you may not be where you want to be. But thank God, you're not where you used to be. Drinking whiskey at the club, sleeping around, living like the devil. But now Christ has come home. Christ has come home. You, your mind is changed. And even when you make a mistake, something in your heart is telling you, I deserve better than this. Why? Because the life of God is inside of you. And the life of God is inside of you. It is so potent, he will not let you go. He will not let you go. Even when you make a mistake, he come and grab and say, it's all right. It's all right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to help you. I'm going to empower you. And you're going to overcome the situation. Okay? If it, because if God is for you, who can be against you? If God is for you, I said, if God... I didn't say Stephen Harper. I didn't say Donald Trump. I didn't say the Canadian government. If God is for you, that's why don't cry over situation. Wipe your tears. Square your shoulders. Walk like God is on your side. Walk like you are really a child of God. Are you hearing me here? Dry your tears. If you're going to cry, cry. But dry your tears. And not like God is really for you. He's not out to kill you or hurt you. Remember, he sent Christ to die for you. And Jesus was the best thing in heaven. 
Yet he sent him to die for you. Which means it revealed your value. It revealed how special you are to daddy God. That he sent heaven's best for you. You can receive that as a revelation or just a nice religious statement. I choose to take it as a revelation that he loves me. I believe if God has a wallet, my picture is inside of it. That's what I believe. I believe this about myself and no one will talk me out of it. If God is for me, who can be against me? Someone said that's braggadocious. I brag it on God because I know who I am. I know my limitations. That's my wife. She tells me my limitations. But I know my God. I know my limitations. My wife knows all my limitations. But I know Jesus. I know my God. Get to know God. And when you face situation, it doesn't move you. You don't give up your joy for some, some, something so, so elementary. You refuse to go to the lower life. A fear, lower life, a discouragement, lower life. Sometimes I still get discouraged, but I shake myself up quickly. Like, for example, I was here, I was here, and um, Friday, Friday or Thursday, Thursday, and the building was in a mess. The whole office is totally just, office just destroyed, with books all in, just terrible. I came. And I have thousands of dollars worth of books, values into millions. Came to my office. And then I had to make a decision. I said, maybe I should just cancel the Sunday morning service. Because, you know, I don't want to bring you here in the place falling apart like this. But what inspired me was this. I had a vision of my pastor in the Caribbean. Pastor Ishmael Charles, whose church roof has blown off. Yet they gather on Sunday morning to worship God. I said, if my pastor can gather his people who lost their house, who lost their cause, I need some for help and preach the message here, who lost everything, who can come to the house of God and still worship. I said, we going to have church here. I don't give his leaking. I called my guys together. I said, guys, I need some help. All the guys come and we, 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 sh we vacuum this place. We have some, 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 some nice scent and we're here this morning. Praise God. Why? I've learned to not allow nothing of this earth realm to steal my joy. Because your joy is your strength. When my wife had cancer, God spoke to me and said, the way out of this is keep your joy. Keep your joy. Your joy is your faith. Your joy is your strength. Where's my church again? Your joy is your way out. And Satan is after your joy. Because your joy is your strength. Your joy is your faith. Your joy is your way out. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. If God is for me, there must be a way out of this difficult predicament. I know what they're saying. I know what the banks are saying. I know what they're saying. But if God is for me, there must be a way out of this difficult predicament. And then I, I function that way in my consciousness, in my words, in my emotions. Come on. Because I need a miracle. Miracles don't just happen. Miracles are not magic. Miracles happen when divine laws are set in motion. When divine laws are set in motion, miracles take place. Hallelujah. And joy is a divine law. I said joy is a divine law. I said joy is a divine law. I said joy is a divine law. So he said, 
verse 2. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. Next verse. Don't, don't, don't get, I've been on this verse now for months now. Don't get tired of it. Because the word of God is pregnant with revelation. The word of God is pregnant with God life. My eyes also shall see my desire and my enemy. My eyes shall see the downfall of my enemy. Whatever enemy is trying to come out against you, I have a word from God to tell you. If you can see in your imagination, if you can see in your heart, like David, he was in a cave running from Saul. But he said, because of this oil on my head, my eyes shall see the downfall of my enemy. And my ears shall hear that my enemy who is pursuing me, there are so many. David says, sometimes I feel like I surround like bees around me. But in the name of my God, they will fall. Amen. That's a man who knows God. He didn't write this verse in the scripture in the palace. He write these scriptures when he was in the cave. Running from the enemy. But he remembers something. He said with this fresh oil on my head. There's a way out. All I have to do is be conscious of this fresh oil. And I know. There will be a way out. I don't know how it's going to happen. But one thing I know. There's a way out. I don't know everything. But one thing I know, there is a way out of this difficult predicament. How do I know? God is for me. If God is for me, who, who can be against me? I know what the doctor said. I, I cannot fix it. But if God is for me, who can be against me? I know we need a building. The dreams that God's given us in this church here. If all of us even a triple tithe, we can't even touch the nations. But tithe, still tithe. But the dreams and the vision God gave your pastors are huge. But we need help from God. We need help from God. That's how we share testimonies with you. To inspire you. That God. Is not a respect to a person. If he did it for Billy. He can do it for Lucy. One requirement. Believe. Believe. And to believe. You must change your habits. I said to believe. You must change your habits. What. Habitual thing you are doing that is limiting your faith. What are you doing that is hindering your faith? What are you doing that when problems come, it choke you? You become afraid when you hear bad news. Change that. Am I talking, talking to myself? Is all right? What are you, what are we doing? What are we doing that causes us to become afraid? When we hear news that beyond your paycheck, when you hear news that beyond your circumstances, what are you doing? You change that thing, it impact your faith, impact your conviction. And then you'll be strong. Even though you may stumble a bit, you will come back on course. Because the Holy Ghost will say, that's okay. I heard pilots, when they're flying from one destination, they change, they define tune the plane every five minutes. Every five minutes. And the plane will land 
at the airport that they're destined to go to. That's why we need to keep fine-tuning ourselves. That's why coming to the house of God is so important. Every time you miss the house of God, you're off course. Because the word of God, the spirit of God. Remember now, here, for example, I'm teaching words. But it's not so much what I'm saying. It's the Holy Ghost that is, that is feeding you. I'm just using words in my limited vocabulary. I'm just using words, but I'm, a, I'm aware of the Holy Ghost that's on my life. So as I'm teaching you, he take the words I'm saying, and, but inside those words is the oil of God. And he goes to the congregation, and he feed this one, he lift this one, he smack this one, say, stop it, to this one. <laughs> And this other one, he said, I'm going to hug you. You need a hug. I'm for you. Come on. Like I was preaching here at school, and I was talking to Daniel after the service. He said, man of God, you were preaching? And I heard about investment. I said, investment? I was, didn't preach nothing about investment. What are you talking about? But the Holy Ghost. He knows what his children needs. Come on, talk to me here. He knows what each of us need. He knows that sometimes our tank is low with, with, this, with encouragement. And he come and with a statement to encourage you. That's the Holy Ghost. And sometimes, that's why it's so important for you to be humble. And don't think you know it all. Because what I'm saying, it may not be for you right now, but the Holy Ghost who knows all things, you might come across someone at work who need to hear what you're hearing right now. Say, I'm anointed with fresh oil. I need the fresh oil of the Holy Ghost. Say, I need the fresh oil of the Holy Ghost. Now, let's go a little further now. Because I want to share about something that the Holy Spirit put in my heart. In the season that we're in as a church. And God has a destiny. For us to live in faith. I say God has a destiny. For us. And as your pastor. It's my responsibility. To use words to help you. To discover. That destiny. I want to talk about. Because. One of the thing. That the fresh oil releases it caused you to flourish say it caused me to flourish come on say it caused me to flourish there's a flourishing that will take place let's drop down to the next verse verse 12 the righteous shall flourish 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 means to bloom in every area of your life. I say in every area of your life. There is a flourishing that God has for you. And when the anointing for flourishing is released in a place. One of the things it's attacked is it attack the spirit of lack. Are you displacing it now? One of the, the thing the flourishing anointing does, it's attack lack. It's assault lack. It breaks the back of lack. Oh, come on with me here. God wants you to flourish financially. 
it, it's too quiet here again. I was telling my students last week. Um, it, it, it was last week. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But let's hear this. That um, I'm a part of a, an author's group on the internet where we get together sometime and have a conference. And it's amazing the conversation I have with these unbelievers authors. It's a different kind of conversation. It's even refreshing sometimes. To hear them talk about millions of dollars and that stingy atmosphere is not there. That uncomfortable feeling. Are you following me here? That follow church folks. But you are heavenly. You are of a heavenly race. I say, you are of a heavenly race. And I'm so, it was so refreshing sometimes to hear these guys talk. And sometimes they raise millions of dollars in a half an hour to some crazy causes. And you come to church and you mention the F word, finances. All of a sudden, there's a, there's a, there's like, oh, here we go again. Here we go again. What's that? What's that? What's that? The anointing for flourishing must attack that. Because that is what's stopping you. I learn if I become a generous giver, it will attack lack in my life. My wife and I are generous givers. We give all the time, financially. We give thousands of dollars every, every year to the things of God. And I've learned that's a secret. So whenever I hear about finances or giving, I don't feel, here we go again, you know, okay? They're going to sing, and the wife's going to sing some song, and there'll be an announcement, and then the offering teaching, and the coldness coming. Come on! I bind that spirit from my church. That cold feeling. Are you following me here? It been to most churches I've been to. What's the possible about church? You take an offering. Everybody's jumping around, excited, excited. Then they say, offering time. And here it is. That cold spirit come right in. I'm like, ah, yeah, I recognize the devil. He's of the devil. Are you hearing me here? It's a sign that you're not really free. Because when you're free, the things of the kingdom doesn't offend you. Years ago, I was coming from Vernon. God spoke to me. The next six months, give half of your paycheck to me. I said, I bind that, I bind that thought. I bind that thought. I bind that thought. I bind that thought. Bind that thought. But then, I, I, I understand the word of knowledge. It keeps coming back over and over and over and over. I'm having lunch with Christopher. Having, we are having dinner with Christopher. I'm biting my burger. I'm thinking of the burger. And bam! Uh, I wish I didn't know how the word of knowledge come. Came home, told my wife about it. She wasn't, she wasn't as ha even as happy as me. She said, but how can we do that? I don't know. How? I have the paycheck. We did it for six months. Don't know how. God gave us grace to do it. Why? I refuse to allow money to control my life. I'm going to be free as Jesus. I'm going to be free as Daddy God. I want this church to come to a point of such liberty that when you hear the word finances from the pulpit, you go crazy. You shout. And not that cold, stinky, smelly feeling. But coming, oh, 
When I go with all those guys, Anthony Robinson and Brian Trace and all those guys, they, they, they talk about, these are heathens. Heathens. And they raise sometimes three, five million in half an hour. And that feeling is not there. They're laughing. They're screaming. I said, something, something is off with this picture here. Something is off. I said, if heathen can be free in money, why the church in bondage? Are you hearing me here? It's a spirit. And it started by pastors who preach against this message from the pulpit. Who says, wrong. One guy I know, he wrote a book. From that book he wrote, he makes 320 million for one book. Yet he preached against prosperity. He criticized Benny Hinn, criticized Copeland. But yet his kids would never worry about money the rest of their life. That's hypocrisy in the highest level. Because the Bible says, you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know brings freedom. If you don't know the truth concerning any topic in the Bible, Satan has every legal ground to hold you in bondage. By come to prophesy, we as this church and in this city and in this nation, we are coming out at the spirit of lack. We're going to be a generous church, a generous city, a generous nation. In the name of Jesus. Be generous because you are free. You're free. You're free. Money doesn't intimidate you. Lack doesn't intimidate you. Because if you fear of not having enough, you always not have enough. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. I'm raising champions in this place here. As I'm raising champions, financial champions. Come on, talk to me here. One of these days, I'm happy listening to this, com- this conversation I had on Monday night with this, Monday evening with these guys. I'm like, this, 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 this it's, so, it's so refreshing sometimes. That, that cold feeling is not there. But the anointing for flourishing has an assignment to attack the spirit of lack. To attack the spirit of shortage. Because the spirit of shortage tells you you have to hold on tight to what you have. But a liberal spirit says, no. I'm going to give what I have to God and watch God. Now, you have to grow in this area here. We have to start somewhere. You have to grow in this area here. Maybe, maybe you don't tithe. Start giving um, 2% of your income. But you grow. You grow. Because, see, where your heart is, You'll put your money there. Where your heart is. Your, 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 your money follow where your heart is. And if your heart is into you only, if your heart is into fear, if your heart is into the natural circumstances of life, that's where your money will go to. I'm not trying to condemn anybody. I'm teaching the word of God. You know, sometimes we we, we live in a culture, everybody has to hear nice messages. Just burp me, pastor. Just burp me. I'm not burping nobody. The Bible says in these last days, many become lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. You don't get changed by hearing 
milky messages. You change when you hear a message that is strong, that motivate you to tell you that you're bigger than the situation you're facing. That you're strong on the inside. Hallelujah. Let's go to work here. Um, Genesis 26. God has a financial destiny for you. Let's go to 24 first. Genesis 24 first, verse 1. God has a financial destiny for you to fulfill. So God has a financial destiny for me to fulfill. There's a financial destiny for you that only you can fulfill. Genesis, um, thank you, 24 verse 1. And Abraham, read it for me, 1, 2, 3, go. Uh-huh. The Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. But when Abraham started out, that wasn't his testimony. He was 80 years old, still living at home. Can you imagine his neighbor? Abraham, hey, what's up? I'm going home. Home? Yeah, I still live at home. Oh. How old are you? 80. <whistles> you live at home still. With your mama and papa? Yes. Why? Don't know. Mama paid the bills. <laughs> That's a bad testimony. But God didn't come and say to him, come here, boy. Come here. Come on, come here. God didn't come and say, Abraham, I understand. You can stay here the rest of your life. Mama would burp you. Mama would take care of you. Just stay here. God, didn't, God said, Abraham, leave now. God come on the scene and smack him. You've been living with your mama for too long. Get out. Have a destiny for you to fulfill. You're called to raise nation. You're called to build nation. Me? Me? Are you sure? You mean I have to give up mama's pie? Yes. Make your own pie. Or you're leaving. But there are some Satanists and ministers put their arms around their congregant and said, it's okay. It's okay. It's not okay. No. It's not okay. You're designed for the top. And to do that, you have to change your habits. Can your habits affect your beliefs? Or else, when you turn 60, you have the same problems, you have the same habits. I think this is good preaching. This is good preaching. This is good preaching, man. This is good preaching. But I take myself. This is good preaching. This is good preaching. Your habits, you change your habits, you change your beliefs, you change your conviction. I mean that you get into the word. You read the word. You come to church. You, 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 be, you, you, you commit to something. If your habits right now is not produce the lifestyle you want to live, hoo-hoo. Einstein said it's a form of insanity. To keep doing the same thing, banging your head against the wall over and over and say, hey, how come my head is hurting every time? That's insanity. Change your habits. Remember one time the Lord spoke to me to, 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 to write this book, The Cleansing Blood. I said, I'm going to write it, Lord. I'm going to write it. I will write that book. In the name of Jesus, I will write that book. God said, Stop praying. Write the book. Do it. 
He said, write. If you cannot write a chapter, don't start with a chapter. Start with a page. If you can't write a page, oh, 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 write a paragraph. But today, where's my phone, man? This phone I have here? Ooh, where's, my, where's my phone, Pastor? This phone here? Apple. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ah, there's a button here. Our, our, my wife was talking to someone one day, and she was, she, t- she, she pressed the button, and she speak, and words appear. I said, hey. If she can do that, to send an email, I can write books that way. So now, I, I, I type, I, I, <laughs> I press that button, and I keep speaking, and the words appear, I say, I'll keep talking, I will keep talking, I will keep talking. I'm telling you, change your habits. Rather than saying, it's not working, find out what you can do. You cannot write two chapters, okay? Write a paragraph. Come on. You cannot tithe. Come on. 10%. Start somewhere. Change your habits. Remember, remember I was talking to Brian. I said, boy, help me. I get into shape. I need to get into shape, man. I need to get into shape, man. I, I, I play basketball, and the young kids are just... The young kids are hurting me big time in the basketball. Especially my son Joshua. He just beat him in the basketball court. I'm going to. I said, Brian, help me. Help me, Brian. He said, do some squats. I said, squats? Me and squat? I ain't doing no squat. He said, come over here. He said, do this. Do this. I do this. He said, do this. I said, oh, no way. No way I'm not doing that stuff. Not doing that stuff, man. He said, try it, man. Then he gave me, he put me on the schedule. He said, do 50. 50? I went, hey, hey. My back is sore. Change your hat. Today, 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 I do 150 straight every day. Straight every day. Straight. Don't mess with me, man. Then he told me, he told me, he told me, be quiet, be quiet. He told me, do sit up, do, do push ups. I could do push up. Then he dropped the big bomb. He said, Do planks. Plank is from the devil. Plank is the antichrist going something to happen. I tried that stuff, man. I went for 10 seconds. 10 seconds in the plank. I said, No. Today, hey. Hey. Plank is no problem now. You change your habits. It's affect your conviction. It's affect your belief. It's affect your confidence. Or else have the same problem every year. Wanting to work out. Wanting to write that book. Wanting to go on a mission field. Then all of a sudden you're 65 years old. change your habits. If your habits right now is not producing the lifestyle you desire. This is a good message. This is a good message, man. This is a good message, my friend. I'm by the tape for, I'm by the city for myself. If it's not producing the lifestyle you desire, don't cry. Don't fast for 40 days. Change it. Change it. Find someone that can help you don't be too prideful. Don't be too prideful to ask for help. Come on. Don't be too prideful. You, you change your habits. You change your habits. Abraham didn't start out having all things. He started out living with his mama and his papa at 80 years old. God came and said, Abraham, it's time to move on. I sure he didn't like it. Can God tell him, I'm going to send you to a place. He said, where? I don't know. You just trust me. God didn't give him all the details. All he told him that leave. Just leave. Where are we going to go? Just leave. <laughs> and then we read this verse. And Abraham was old. 
well stricken in age. And the Lord, and the Lord has blessed Abraham. Oh my goodness. With what? With all things. With all things. I say with all things. Look at 35 because sometimes we are very spiritual and we don't know what all things really mean. So let's find out what all things mean for Abraham. Genesis 34 verse 35. 24 verse 35. 24 verse 35. All things for some people is different. But for Abraham, all things was this. And the Lord, read it for me, and read it for Amplified afterwards. One, two, three, go. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Huh. Wow. All he had to do is leave home. Just leave your environment. Leave the place of limitation. Leave the place of comfort. Just decide, I don't know where I'm going to go, but one thing I know, I'm leaving this place. I'm leaving. Where? Don't know. But I know tomorrow morning when you come back, I will not be here. I'm still walking, but I'm leaving. And look what the Amplified Bible says. Whew. And the Lord has blessed my master mightily. He has become great. And he has given him flocks, herds, servants, men servants, maid servants, camel, and asses. Well, Abraham like asses and camel. I like BMWs. I want no camels. No camel, no asses. Just some, just some BMWs. Come on. A little Bentley on the side. And I'm messing with you now. That's okay. I want no camels. See, I'm trying to shake you up. To think it's possible. Because if you cannot think it, it wouldn't become your reality. I wouldn't buy a Bentley. If I have one, I'll drive it. But my dreams are souls. My desires are nations. My desires are impact regions for the gospel. Come on. But you're sure if you want to, I drive it downtown. With my, with my cool sun, sunglasses, peeling my wife and windows up and all looking cool in the Bentley. But the point I want to leave with you today is this. Change your habits. Locate your habits. Locate your habits. Write your habits down and ask yourself the question. Are the habits that I'm, uh, I'm practicing habitually, are they producing the life I want to see in five years from now? Because five years will come and the habits you have today will, will, act, will show up in five years. So you, you, you do everything possible to change your habits. Change your habits. Work at, just make some small changes. Some small changes. Small changes. Small changes. I, I taught you years ago that there are five things you can do that will do, it will dramatically change your life. Five simple things. I do this every day. Maybe not every day, but most of the time I practice this. You, you read the Bible. I, I'm praying by the grace of God, I'm going to have my devotion coming out. That's for you. So you could read every morning with your Bible. So some thoughts of faith, and thoughts of victory. And you can read with your Bible. So you read your Bible for five minutes. Because you need the injection of fresh life. Or else you have to face your day on your own inspiration. So number one, you read the Bible. You read your Bible. You read your Bible. Five minutes a day. Number two, you pray in the spirit. You pray in the spirit. What happens when you read the Bible and you pray in the spirit? You, you drive the word that you've just read into your heart. more. Come on, talk to me. Yes, yes. So, so you, you read the word. You pray in the Holy Ghost. 
the next thing you need to do, you need to write your vision. Write your future. It might be in your head. You got to write your future. Are you just making fun with your life? Write your vision. Your vision is your future and paper. Write it down. Write it down. You write it down. And you stick with it. Because your habits you have right now, it may not be producing the life that you want. So I'm giving little things to do. You, 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 you pray. You, know, you read the word of God. Then what do you do? What do you next? You pray in the Holy Ghost. In tongues. And number three, what? you write your vision. You do this every day. Every day. Write your vision down every day. You write it down every day. You write it down. Can you show God, this is my future. It's important to me. Come on. Lastly, you read something inspiring. You read something inspiring. You read something inspiring. I, I, I get a book recently called, it's called, um, it, it's a chicken noodle, chicken soup. Yeah, they have, oh my goodness, they have 600 testimonies, powerful testimonies in them. I read one recently about Michael, Michael what's his name again, the, the Olympian guy, Michael Phillips. Phillips? Phillips, he, <laughs> no kids want to date him in, no, no girls want to date him in school. They say, you're too awkward, your arms are too long, and you're too tall. And plus, he struggled with ADD. And all the teachers call him all kind of names. Today, he's in the a decorated Olympian. I think it's 21 medals he has. 24 medals. Whew. I read his story. And what he had to overcome. And sometimes the person what you have to overcome is not outside forces. It's internal forces. Is your own limitation, is your own fears, is your own idiot, is your own issues, your own insecurities. And he said he had to work on himself. I read that story and I left my day inspired. Left my day inspired. And you could face your day on a positive note. You, you read the Bible. You pray in the Holy Ghost. You write your goals down, your vision down. It may look foolish, but write it down still. Let my son Joshua, four years ago, he said, I'm writing on my dreams every morning. Daddy, what are you doing? He said, I'm writing on my dreams. I said, really? All those things you want? Yeah. He said, I want a laptop, Daddy. I said, good. Join me. He went to the store. My son Joshua. And he write down every morning for 41 days, every morning, I'm getting a laptop. I'm getting a laptop. Thank you, Jesus, for my laptop. Thank you, Jesus, for my laptop. And one day my wife caught him in, 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 in the, um, help me, honey, in the garage, praying tongues. Hi. What are you doing? I'm praying for my laptop. One day I was here praying, and someone gave me some money. And when I passed about came to a church, he was so inspired by this young kid writing his dreams down. He said, I want to be a part of this. He gave you Joshua, I think it was 100 bucks. He was so inspired. So I was here preaching one day, and someone gave me 600 bucks. I said, yeah, praise God. See if I have a suit or something. And God said, no, that's Joshua's laptop. I said, really? (laughs) 
I went and bought him his laptop. Chris, the 1st of December, he was sleeping. I wrapped it really nicely, put it on his bed. I said, son, the word, wake up, watch this. He said, that's my laptop, right? <laughs> <laughs> he went, open it, and tears start to come down his eye. You see, when you set these laws in motion, God start to walk behind the scene. Come on. To bring you into the realm of exploit. Come. Read us four things off for me again. The four things off for me. Number one. Read your Bible. Number two. Number three. Number four. Read something inspiring. Or even listen to something inspiring. And you will set your course positively. And you will have a much better day. Rather than being grumpy all the time. Amen. Thank you.